When the Lord created the earth, He filled it with millions of amazing plants and animals. Today, we call that biodiversity. Let's play a quick game to see how well you recognize some of God's most famous creations. Get ready to guess the animal as it's drawn onto the screen. We'll start with a fairly easy one. Can you tell what it is yet? That's right, if you guessed a toad or frog, you're off to a great start. Did you know, there are over 120 different types of animals mentioned in the Bible. Okay, let's see if you can guess this next animal. Here's a hint. This animal does not live in the water. Yes, it's a bird, but if you guessed bald eagle, you are really on your game. Did you know, it was the Lord who shut the door of Noah's ark. The Bible says so in Genesis 7 and 16. Here goes the next animal. Let's see if you can guess what it is. Here's a hint. It is not a horse. Right, it's a giraffe. Did you know the scripture refers to Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelations 5 and 5? All right, let's see the next illustration. Try to guess what kind of animal it is. That's right, it's a lion. So you've really got the hang of it now. Let's keep going. See if you can guess the next animal that's drawn onto the screen. You've got it, it's a deer. Did you know that the sheep is the most frequently mentioned animal in the Bible? Well, this next animal is definitely not a sheep. If you guessed alligator or crocodile, you guessed right. Good job. All right, here's a hint for the next animal to be drawn on the screen. The name of this specific animal begins with C-H. It's not a monkey, it's a chimpanzee. If you guess chimpanzee, you are very, very good at this game. Did you know, millions of trees are accidentally planted by squirrels who bury nuts? and then forget where they hid them. All right, here goes the last animal. Let's see if you can guess what it is. Got it, it's a butterfly. Did you know, Jesus used fish to perform a miracle four times in his earthly ministry. Thanks for playing along and remember, the next time that you speak with God, be sure to thank him for Earth's biodiversity. Wait is over. Now comes the real fun. Hi friends. Happy Sunday.
today. We are so glad you have joined us today. You know what's super cool? Is that we are all worshiping the King in song and dance and music right now together. So let's start off with Good Morning, our call to worship. This is a morning like no other. Cause it's a good, 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 good morning. It's a good, 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 good morning. A good, 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 good morning. It's gonna be a very good day. Cause you're a good, 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 good God. A good, 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 good God. A good, 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 good God. You are a very good God. Let us remember while we are here today. Why? We're here to sing. All right, so raise your hand if you remember our song, Gone, from Easter. We introduced it this year. Remember, we did Gone, Gone, and we also did Done, Done. Well, in that song, it talks about the power of the blood, and you might be wondering, what does that mean, the power of the blood? Well, let's go back, let's rewind a little bit to some of our conversations in the loft at our church building, where we talked about how in the Old Testament, there had to be, well, sin, sin. Remember, sin is a bad choice as we make. Sin requires a blood sacrifice. So in the Old Testament, people would bring in their best, like sheep, goats, doves, animals like that, and they would shed their blood as an atonement for their sin to say, you know, I confess my sin. Well, we don't have to do that anymore, right? Which I'm really glad. And the reason we don't have to do that anymore is because Jesus is our ultimate sacrifice. He shed his blood once and for all for all of us, for every sin of the world. Isn't that beautiful? And he didn't stay dead on the cross. He didn't stay dead at all. What happened? He rose victoriously from the grave. He conquered sin and death because he is the superhero, the true and only God, the true and only superhero, and he is worthy of our worship and praise. And he wants a relationship with you. That is so cool. And so our part's pretty easy. We just need to confess, which means admit, that we are sinners, that we've made bad choices, and that being sinners, we need a savior. And Jesus is the only one who can save us from our sins. He was holy and perfect. He is God, the only man who was holy and perfect. And he died for our sins. He shed his blood on the cross for us. And then he rose victoriously. He is our living savior. I really hope that each of you decide to follow Jesus and that you really know and embrace his love so, knowing now the power of the blood, our ultimate sacrifice, our superhero Jesus, let's sing Gone together. That will overcome 
'cause your time is up. Well, I'm gonna live like a stone is gone. ago. It's called You Forgive Me. And I want to share a verse with you. John 1, 9. If we confess, remember that means admit, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, which means to clean from all unrighteousness. He forgives us. Let's sing this new song together.
was beautiful. Thank you so much for worshiping with me. Now remember, we can worship in all aspects of life, the way that we think about God and talk about God and, and praise Him for what He's doing and what He's done, point others to Him. We can worship God in so many ways. And I love the way that He uses you to bring Him glory. Thank you for loving Jesus in the many ways that you do. Bye, friends. Good morning, Flagstaff Bible kids. Thank you for coming this Sunday to listen to us. Uh, we welcome you and, oh my goodness. And we miss you, we miss seeing you. And I can't wait to see, well, I get to see him, but I can't wait to see you guys all again. You're gonna have a great lesson here with Mr. John, because he loves to teach the Bible and so do I, but I have to go. <laughs> we'll see you when we're back. Bye-bye. There she goes. Miss Teresa really does miss you guys. So anyhow, today, well, first, last week, you heard about um, John the Baptist and how Miss Tina explained to you that he came and was born, had an incredible, incredible, uh, you know, amazing, his, you know, his father being told to name him John and, and having to not be able to talk for a while because he was waiting for John to come. And, and when John came, God helped him to talk again. And, and John was an incredibly important person, as you learned last week, because he was preparing the way for the most incredible, wonderful thing that has ever happened. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So, um, where we are in our story, think about all back, all the way back to Adam and Eve. I don't know if you guys remember that far back. You remember the, 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 uh, the pictures along our wall of our Sunday school room, which someday we will get to go back to, but the Sunday school room, you remember the pictures of all the Bible stories we've gone through all the way back to Adam and Eve, and it's been leading up and leading up and leading up to an incredibly special event. And we're going to get to talk about that today. So this is a terrific lesson to talk about. It is about Jesus Christ being born. Now, Jesus had always been with his father, God, from forever. For he never had a beginning. He, he's always been. He is God. And, and he, it was long decided that in order to bring us to God and for us to know God and enjoy God, Jesus was planning on coming to become one of us. And it is, it is all the stories that we've talked about before, the like King David and, and the prophets and the Nehemiah building the temple and or building Jerusalem and, and all these things were all leading up and pointing toward Jesus coming to be with us. And he was here with us for a period of time. And we'll be talking about more stories coming on about as he grows up. But today we're talking about just when he was born as a baby. And it'll be, it's a phenomenal thought that just think the very person who created everything is all powerful, can do anything becomes a little baby. So that he did this, he left heaven to become a person and live with us as part of his way, his, his beginning of moving to where he could save us from our own sins and, and save us from the punishment that our sins deserve. So we'll go ahead and we will... Uh, uh, go into the video and you'll be able to hear the story on the video. Mary and Joseph lived in the town of Nazareth. During the time Mary was pregnant, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus announced that everyone needed to be registered for a census. Since Joseph was a descendant of King David, he and Mary traveled to Bethlehem, the city of David. 
while they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. Mary and Joseph looked for a safe place to stay, but every place was full. So Mary and Joseph found a place where animals were kept, and that is where Mary had her baby. Joseph named him Jesus. Mary wrapped the baby tightly in cloth and laid him in a feeding trough. That night, some shepherds were watching over their sheep in the fields near Bethlehem. Suddenly, an angel stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I have very good news for you and for all the people. Today, a savior who is the Messiah and the Lord was born for you in the city of David. Then the angel said, you will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a whole army of angels appeared, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels left and returned to heaven, Ooh. the shepherds decided to go see if the angels' words were true. They hurried to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. Then the shepherds went and told others about the baby Jesus. Everyone who heard about Jesus was surprised and amazed. Mary thought about everything that was happening and tried to understand it. The shepherds returned to their fields, praising God because everything had happened just as the angel said. The birth of Jesus was good news. Jesus was not an ordinary baby. He is God's son, sent to earth from heaven. Jesus, the promised savior, came into the world to deliver us from sin and death. I told you that story was good. Shepherds and angels and babies being born in mangers like a kind of like a, a barn and Jesus being the maker of the universe being a baby and being found in a like a feed trough with with you know wrapped in cloths and shepherds coming and and worshiping him and then going away very very thrilled about what they had learned it's a great story and it gets even better so that, but that's later. We'll have to get to that on another week. But starting next week, we'll do some more learning about Jesus. Right now, I'd like to like to think about a our new Bible verse for this month. It is all about Jesus being born. You remember I said God becoming one of us. There's a way that it says in this verse. It talks about um, becoming flesh. In other words, what we are made of. We are, we're considered flesh. Uh, it's kind of uh, just a word that means the stuff we're made of. And Jesus, God, became flesh. So here's the verse. It's, it's John 1.14. John was a, a, one of the guys that wrote one of the stories about Jesus, and he also was one of the disciples, and he knew Jesus extremely well. And in fact, he was very, very close to Jesus. Uh, and uh, and he, he wrote this about Jesus at the very beginning of when he starts telling the story of Jesus. He says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Now, there's a lot of words in there. There's like word becoming flesh. Um, glory and and um, let's see, grace and truth, and the, we'll we got the whole month to talk more about what the, what all that means. But that is our Bible verse for this time. Um, I think that we start talking a little bit about it, and then and then if we, do you remember how I would take sticky notes and put them on the wall? 
and we'd have a, a word or two on each sticky note. We'd put it out, take them down and repeat it and take it down and repeat it. It's a great way to memorize. So you feel free to see if someone can do that for you. You grab the, the, the adult that's closest to you and you ask them, hey, can we put this verse on sticky notes and then maybe we can then maybe we can play the little game of pulling one note off at a time and saying the verse until there's no notes and you're saying the verse. So, but back to the verse. And the word became flesh. Jesus, it's a, it's probably a kind of a, uh, for us, it'd be interesting or funny to be called the word, but that's a, one of the Jesus's names. Um, and it, Earlier, John talks about, he says, the word was with God and the word was God. And he's talking the whole time about Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. And he continues on. That's in this is where he's referring to Jesus as the word. He's saying, and the word became flesh. Remember, Jesus came from heaven, became a baby, made of the same stuff we're made of. And he dwelt among us. Jesus was with us for about 33 years or so. And, and again, all that story comes later. So I'm not going to get into that. So we'll leave that alone. And then it talks about, well, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory is an interesting word. It took me a long, long, long time to kind of understand um and maybe I'm still trying to understand it even now more, but it, it is the it, it is the the essence or the the uh, everything that makes God wonderful. It is it is uh, sometimes in the Bible it's shown as light. Like do you remember the shepherds? The the angels came, the glory of the Lord shined down, and it was like a light. And it's this, it's this idea that, that uh, there's all these incredibly wonderful things about God that we look at and we go, wow, that's really cool. That's, we sum all that up by using the word glory. And Anyway, we have seen his glory. We've seen his goodness. We've seen his greatness. We've seen all these things. Glory as of the only son. So Jesus is the son of God the Father. So we've seen his glory, seen the son. And then, he's, then it goes on and it says, full of grace and truth. Grace is another thing, and truth is another thing that is all about God. And, and again, we've got a whole month to explore some of this stuff and, and try to understand it better. Um, truth is, is what's real. What's, uh, you know, a lie is not is t saying something that's not really, it's not real. And the truth is saying what's real, what really is. Um, you're, you're not lying. You're, you're saying something that uh, is just the way things are. So, so grace and truth. Grace is another one of those things where it's God's, God has this, this uh, uh, he's willing to show us goodness even when we don't even deserve it in fact even when we deserve his punishment god so often is still good to us he still holds off on that punishment and and is good to us so that we would love him and that we would lay our lives down for him in fact that's kind of the the whole purpose of Jesus coming as a baby and growing up and going to the cross and, and dying and being raised again. It was all a part of God's plan for us to be able to know him, love him, enjoy him, 
and and he he did it all and we didn't deserve it we didn't deserve any of it he's just good he chooses to love us and he loves us and he offers us this incredible thing of being able to to be able to know him talk to him and enjoy him in fact i think right now we should pray and talk to him and that's one of the things that he's very gracious about doing for us you see he lets us come as his children as people that are have followed jesus and have decided that he will he is our lord and and then we look to him to learn how to live and how to be and how to think and everything for us he has made a way so that we can just walk in front of him and start praying talking to him as and and what's interesting is is we are adopted as children of god when that happens so again we get to walk into god's presence and we get to speak to him like an incredibly wonderful loving father now you guys just a little reminder do you remember in the class what we typically do or many times did was that we would kneel down on the floor if you'll recall kneeling was kneeling was a way of when we pray of pretty much saying god you're my king because you kneel before kings and then we would bow our heads and close our eyes and do you remember what that was our way of saying i trust you because you would never want to bow your head and close your eyes in front of somebody that you do not trust. And by, by bowing our heads and closing our eyes, we're more or less saying, God, I trust you. Now, I'm not going to kneel, otherwise I'll not be any longer here on the video. But I will bow my head and close my eyes and let's, let's pray and uh, talk, talk to God. Father, thank you so much for being our Father, for loving us enough to uh, bring Jesus to earth, that you would make him a baby and that you would uh, uh, have him come to live with us and eventually to make a way so that we could know you and talk to you like a father. It's a wonderful privilege, and I pray that you help each of us to learn to fully enjoy it more and more. Amen. Well, it's been wonderful being with you. And now, I'm going to leave you, and again, Miss Risa and I miss you. Hi Flag Bible Kids, it's Miss Beth and I love that we were able to be together again today. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed worship. It was amazing and enjoyed the Bible story today. And I absolutely love that we were able to hear about the birth of Jesus today. I think that it was amazing that we can hear about this story year round. It is such an important story. We need to be hearing about it year round. And so I love that we're hearing about it not just at Christmas time, but in the middle of the year. So amazing. So we learned today that Jesus was born to be God's promised savior. And we also, we've been focusing on the big picture question, which is, is Jesus God or is he human? So again, kids, and I know I tell you this every week, look around, look to your siblings, your parents, whoever's in the room with you, tell them the answer. That's right, you guys, you are so good. As the son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. Isn't that awesome? And just like this story, it reminds us how God always fulfills his promises. When he promises us something, he fulfills it because he told us he was going to send his son and he did it. So I absolutely love that we were able to hear this story today. Thank you, Mr. John and Miss Risa. We loved hearing the story and to see the video. Um, so now for today, we have a couple crafts that we're gonna do. So because we focused on the birth of Jesus, we're gonna do a craft that has to do with the birth of Jesus. 
So my daughter did two of them. They're close to the same, just a little bit different. So this one, we traced her handprint and then cut it out. And then she made a little baby and she cut out just pieces of paper, just strips of paper and laid it there like it's laying on hay. So on this one, we wrote Jesus loves McKenna and then just wrote the year. So you can punch a hole up here and you can put a string around it. So then you guys can keep it and even keep it around your house just to remember that God always keeps his promise to us as well as Jesus loves me. So this one we just did with construction paper, but then we did another one with some paint. So she did her hand print with paint. And then since we didn't have yellow paint, we used green for the hay and she put the hay around and then she put another baby on there. This one, she decided that we didn't write, need to write anything. Um, so you can do it either way. So you guys can make them however you want. If you have paint or if you have paper, um, just as a reminder to us that God sent his son on earth for us. So then for you big kids, kind of like we talked about last week, I'd love for you guys to make this as well. You know, your parents will love it too. But for you guys, I want you to focus again still on journaling. So remember, you can grab a notebook. If you have a journal, do it in the journal. But fill up that journal on what this story teaches us about God or what it teaches us about the gospel. Also put down what the story teaches you about yourself. And then you can even write in there, who can I tell about this story? Or you can even write on there um, who you can be praying for. So I definitely want you guys to be filling out your journal. You can draw pictures in it about what the story represents. Um, just make sure to put in there whatever you want to pray for or whatever's on your heart and what God's teaching you. So I miss and love each and every one of you. I'm going to pray for us and then we'll be done. Dear Jesus, just thank you for being with us. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. Um, thank you for the reminder, um, God, that you sent your son Jesus for us. That you prom your promise that you told us, Lord, that you fulfilled that promise. And he lived here on earth, Lord, as human. And, but he never sinned, Lord. And then he died on the cross for us. Thank you for that reminder, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Help us to have a good rest of our day today. And in your name, amen. All right, Flag Bible kids, I miss you guys. Love each and every one of you. And I cannot wait to see each and every one of you again. Have a good day. Bye.